reason. We're here for one simple reason. President Biden needs to consider using the 14th Amendment uh, if necessary. The entire GOP death ceiling negotiation is a sad charade. And that's exactly what's wrong about what's wrong with Washington. And uh, that's exactly what's wrong when Washington. That is uh, that uh, Adams family guy, you know, John Fetterman with the carbuncle on his head and all that stuff. And, and that's exactly what's wrong. I thought it might have been Norm MacDonald when it started. Michael, you know, uh, enjoys surprising me with audio sound bites at the top of the show and the top of the uh, various hours. And that one, John Fetterman out of the blue. It's uh, He likes to test my voice recognition programming. And I did think it was Norm MacDonald, who's even funnier than Fetterman. Well, was, past tense, even funnier than Fetterman. That's the, uh, John Fetterman is proof, living proof, that the Democrats could get a can of tuna fish elected to the United States Senate over a uh, TV star heart surgeon, because that's what happened in this case. It's, uh, you know, it's good to have the media on your side, the all-powerful media. I love playing the soundbite of Malcolm the Tenth. you know, Malcolm the Tenth. Uh, of Malcolm X because he summed it up long ago. He was still living when he uh, talked about the news media and how corrupt the news media is and the power that the news media has. With skillful manipulating of the press, they're able to make the victim look like the criminal and the criminal look like the victim. Hey, Malcolm X was onto something there. He, uh, He knew all about the media even back then. Guess this has been going on for longer than we had originally suspected. And uh, Malcolm X was no dope. He was a smart guy. And then, you know what happened. Members of his own gang basically uh, shot and killed him real good at that thing. And then didn't about uh, two years ago, I think Democrats came out and said, oh, no, those guys didn't do it uh, because, you know, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald didn't do it. And uh, Sirhan Sirhan didn't do it. Nobody, nobody did it. You know, it's, um, I wasn't even there. Bring me a small liar. Just amazing, <laughs> just amazing stuff, I'm telling you. Well, happy Friday to you once again, and uh, and welcome back to our uh, most excellent and humble radio broadcast. We have all kinds of crazy because the Democrats, and we have the FBI, the FBI yesterday, the hearing on Capitol Hill about how corrupt the FBI is. Oh, yeah? Who says? Well, all these guys from the FBI uh, say, well, uh, how do they know? Uh, well, because, you know, they worked there for a combined uh, several decades, I think, and and they're testifying under oath on Capitol Hill, and they've gone public and at great personal sacrifice. And the news media says, and they spit on them. You know why? Because the Democrat Party told them to spit on them. And I'm going to get into that because I have audio for you from the events yesterday and, and your corrupt news media. And let me tell you about the, I'm going to tell you about the news media coverage or lack thereof of the events um, involving corruption at the FBI. If only we had a news media, what would they do? If they had a brain, they'd be out in the street playing with it, honestly. Now, here's, uh, before we, uh, and here's, this is a news media-related story as well. The mediaite, you know them? They're left-wing radicals, extremists. Uh, And uh, they have a website right there on Al Gore's amazing internet. And they're allowed to publish things unimpeded, right? Mediaite is left-wing. And MSDNC, are you familiar with them? They're a cable channel. And they're terrible. They don't tell the truth. They have no regard for the truth. They're just another uh, shell corporation for the Democrat Party, masquerading as, posing as a legitimate journalistic operation when everyone knows they are not. You know, they hire, who did they hire? Because CNN and, uh, since we're talking about the FBI corruption, CNN and MSDNC, they hired like Peter Stroke, and they hired Andrew McCabe, and they pay the money to come on there, knowing that they're cheaters and liars, and they come from this crooked operation that made up all this fake stuff and tampered in our election, and, and, uh, you know, they altered that document from the CIA, uh, one of their guys did, so they could lie to the FISA courts to get warrants to spy on the political enemies of the Democrat Party. And then, you know, as though their fealty to the Democrat Party was not already abundantly clear, 
Then CNN hired Andrew McCabe, the disgraced former uh, FBI Justice Department official, and they hired uh, Peter Stroke, who you know spent most of the time in the in the Xerox the Xerox room, right, with uh, Lisa Page. Lisa Page was right. Yeah, turn the page. That was the uh, that was their favorite song. Now here's the uh, story from the left wing media today. Journalists lambasted for reporting quote both sides end quote of story about rifle wielding man protesting near a school bus stop. Now, if you're walking around, aren't you likely to come by school bus stops uh, eventually? A local news station in Baltimore, Maryland, broadcasts a story about a man in Severn, Maryland, protesting recently enacted gun restrictions in the state by carrying an AR-15 near an elementary school bus stop. Tolly Taylor, the WBAL-TV reporter who covered the story, teased the segment on the Twitter. Hasn't been banned from Twitter, apparently. Before it aired, saying, a man with an AR-15 has been showing up for weeks to a school bus stop. It's a school cool bus uh, and uh, where they drop the kids off for a local elementary school. Parents say their kids are afraid. The man says he's protesting Governor Wes Moore, ambitious Democrat, and his new gun control law. You'll hear from both sides at 5 and 6. That's what the WBAL reporter Tolly Taylor said uh, in a tweet, right? You'll hear from both sides at 5 and 6. Now, this caused alleged members of the Fourth Estate, alleged members of the news media, to lose what's left of their minds. Taylor's framing of the story as one which has both sides. He's going to have both sides, you see. Saying both sides would be heard did not sit well with many. But more on that in a moment, they write in the story on the media. So it goes on it. Now, it's legal. They point out that it is legal, not not illegal, but legal to carry open uh, firearms in Maryland. That's the law in Maryland. So the the guy who's been doing this walk around has been there for three weeks. He wears he wears camouflage. He carries an AR-15. And because Democrats are listening, he's African-American. See, because that's I know that's very, very important to you. The armed man is named uh, uh, J-Den, J-apostrophe-D-E-N, uh, Macadori. I'm going to go with Macadori on the, uh, on the pronunciation. Lead. So Jaden Macadori. And uh, they did a quick interview with him, and he seemed like a perfectly nice guy. He said, I really wasn't coming out here for the kids. I was coming out to show people that this is legal. And he seems perfectly calm and, and rational and stuff. But then you go to Jen Psaki. Remember Jen Psaki? She looks like Colonel Kleb from uh, the James Bond movie from Russia with Love with the gasoline-colored hair and the spike in her shoe and all that stuff. Jen Psaki is now a journalist because the best path to million-dollar jobs in television news is through Democrat Party politics. Everybody knows that. Jen Psaki has a Twitter account, too, and she tweeted, Nope. She retweeted the tweet uh, from the reporter saying he'd have both sides at five and six. And Jen Psaki, who is now a million-dollar journalist and the former White House press secretary for Joseph Robinette Biden, she wrote, nope, there are not two sides of bringing an assault weapon to an elementary school bus stop. He says he's just like walking by because he walks around the neighborhood and there are bus stops everywhere because that's the whole idea of bus stops. And at school, you know, it's not just one. That wouldn't make any sense. So they're everywhere. So he walks around and they're like, there's a school bus stop. So, you know, now you ban him in hospitals and stadiums and grocery stores and now nowhere near bus stops because how about uh, city bus stops? Should we prohibit Uh, because it's legal to carry concealed, except in this long list of locations that the Democrats will articulate. But uh, but here is the here is the key. Jen Psaki is now an NBC News journalist. And a a former, well, she's a Democrat Party apparatchik is what she is. There are not two sides of, when you say like two of, two sides of, not very well stated White House press secretary journalist, of bringing an assault weapon to an elementary school bus stop. He's walking. He's on the move the whole time. It's not like he stands there all day long. And then another NBC journalist, Mehdi Hassan, Mehdi Hassan, 
He doesn't like the United States of America. Mehdi Hassan writes, both sides, question mark, seriously, question mark. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Hip, hip, I'm losing my mind, <laughs> honestly. And then in all caps, he writes, stop with the both sides-ism. See, that's the stop with the both sides. They're journalists, allegedly. They're not, though. That's the point of this segment. Uh, both sides, there, no, you know, there are two sides to every story, sometimes three sides, sometimes even more than that. But as journalists, um, they don't want to hear both sides. And that, you know what they're telling you here? They're telling you they don't give you both sides of the story. They're telling you, they're declaring very publicly, we give you only one side. You know which side they give you? The left wing side, their side. What they're saying is we are propagandists that don't believe in American values, don't believe in a free press, don't believe uh, in journalism. Uh, yet they're each paid, doubtless, seven figures by NBC News and MSDNC to pose and posture as journalists. Stop with the both sides-ism? Really? Like it's an ideology. And, and uh, another uh, Democrat a man is terrorizing parents and elementary school students at a bus stop with a beeping AR-15, and this beeping news station is going to have is going to uh, have its audience hear both sides. And the very angry, very angry Democrats who don't want to hear both sides. You know why? Because their instincts have become authoritarian. I'm sorry to have to say, but it's true. Then uh, Brandon Friedman. Let's go, Brandon. Uh, from uh, BF, uh, uh, B. Friedman, D.C., so he lives in Washington, D.C., so he's a lefty, you know, because... He was in the Obama administration. Who, B.F. Uh, Friedman? Yep. Oh, he's an Obama administration official, of course. Does he largely agree with Mao, that most power, that power comes from the barrel of a gun? So uh, Brandon Friedman from D.C. and the Obama administration says, this is some awful blasé framing for a situation in which, as others have noted, a parent would likely be justified in using lethal force against this dude on the spot. Now, see, they're against guns, but they're in favor of killing people. That's kind of typical Democrat stuff, isn't it? The Bullocks next door, real right-wingers. American flag up every day, real fascists. Ought to be gassed. You know the type. You know the type. That's right. It's one of my favorite uh, sound bites from the president's analyst, William Daniels. Real fascists ought to be guests. American flag up every day. <laughs> yeah, and Brandon Freeman, I didn't even know he was an Obama administration official. He thinks that uh, parents would uh, likely be justified in using lethal force against this dude on the spot. That's what the Obama administration official said, because... They love death more than you love life. That's the old Al-Qaeda saying. And uh, the Democrat Party has, uh, I think, pretty much co-opted that, haven't they? I think so. You bet your bottom dollar. You know that I like to tell the truth, and I like to offer solutions. Well, if you have high blood pressure, and who doesn't, honestly? Or maybe you know somebody who does. I want to tell you about some friends of mine, 120 Life. 120 Life is a Chicago-based company that developed a juice drink that can help lower your blood pressure naturally. Thank you very much. 120 Life is a natural juice drink made from pomegranates, tart cherries, cranberries, hibiscus, beetroot, magnesium, all of which are good for your blood pressure. Take a look on, on Al Gore's amazing internet. It can help lower your blood pressure without side effects. I'm drinking it, and I love it. I know that you will, too. Helps keep me energized and helps keep my blood pressure in check. What's wrong with that? The truth is there are easy, natural ways to help keep your blood pressure in check, and one of them is 120 Life. So check it out and tell them Chris Plant sent you when you do. Visit 120life.com. That's 120life.com. You can order a two-week trial pack of their juice drink. There's money-back guarantee. Uh, so, you know, come on. And when you use the code CHRIS because you hang with me, you're going to save 15%. The natural approach to blood pressure management. Visit 120life.com today and start seeing the benefits in just two weeks. These statements and products have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent any disease or condition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are journalists and government officials. None of this both sidesism. Ja wohl, mein Kommandant. 
We don't want to hear both sides. You will be justified in killing him on the spot. You will obey. This is today's Democrat Party and the news media, but I repeat myself. Hey, Chris here with some exciting news. Now you can listen to me live on the WMAL app. Doesn't matter if you're in your car, in the office, on the go. The WMAL app delivers crystal clear around-the-clock news coverage anywhere with cell service or Wi-Fi. So don't miss a second of your favorite shows. Download the WMAL app today on the Apple App Store or at Google Play Store. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, still going to get to the FBI and the media's corruption and malfeasance. That's still coming up. I should uh, share with you also that uh, we are posting our our daily show stories sheet, which uh, Michael and I and uh, perhaps a couple of other people contribute to, and then Michael assembles in the day. And Michael puts the headlines, Michael Piercy. Puts the headlines on like uh, Biden is a global embarrassment is the uh, is the headline at uh, the top of the story sheet and LGBTQ issues that's the abbreviated because it could be QQIAA plus pound sign ampersand things like that uh, whistleblowers so if you go to our to our Twitter to our Facebook to our Instagram you will find today's story sheets and I get to most of them normally I try to get to all of them but it's not always easy. You know what I mean? Um, let's go. Yesterday, we were talking about Alec Baldwin. You are worthless, Alec Baldwin. You are worthless, Alec Baldwin. And how he uh, just finished up that movie where he shot and killed the cinematographer and wounded the the director. And he said he didn't feel guilty about it. And, it was, you know, he didn't point the gun at her and he didn't pull the trigger. So it's talk about your magic bullet. Forget about JFK. This is uh, even more magic. And now his next movie um, uh, project, they call them projects, is uh, they call them pictures too. His next picture project is about Kent State, 1970, Four Dead in Ohio. Great song. Um, and with that, let's go to the telephones. Let's go to Joanne calling from Dover, Ohio, listening on the WMAL app on Al Gore's Amazing Internet. Hey, Joanne. Hi, how are you? I'm just great. What do you say, huh? Well, first, I want to say that I love your show because. It's the only way I know what's going on in the rest of the world. Well, it's Second tough out all, there. Want... Tough news environment out there, I know. Yes, but you, 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 you keep us informed. But my cousin was uh, in the National Guard, and they were sent to Kent State, and they were told not to shoot. They had orders not to shoot. Uh, but someone was trigger happy, and um, they couldn't resist, and they shot. And then once one person shot, some of the other guardsmen, they were followed right along and shot. Yeah. Very, just a travesty, just a travesty. Well, of course, uh, absolutely, four people uh, four people died that day, four people were killed, and uh, we still talk about that, but, um, you know, on Capitol Hill on January 6th, a nice young woman who served 12 years in the Air Force was shot and killed, and nobody talks about her very much, uh, do they? I hope Alec Baldwin doesn't shoot anyone during the making of this movie. Uh, let me let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I uh, yesterday I was down at the Newsmax HQ in Washington D.C., our nation's capital, um, doing the uh, the television show Chris Plant and the Right Squad airs at 9 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States of America, all across the great land of ours. And uh, you know Newsmax is doing great, beating CNN and and. Uh, CNN sucks, as Chris Cuomo likes to say, and um, and it's uh, wonderful stuff. And and last night, I think the show was very good last night, and we're still, look, last night was the, our ninth episode, nine episodes. Tonight will be episode number 10, number 10. And and we're uh, in the getting to know you stage and, and all of that. There's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. It's television, not like radio, where, uh, you know, I come in and talk to Michael Piercy and then come in and do three hours of radio and talk to you. Um, because 
you know, people ask me from time, why don't you do guests? And I say, well, I do guests. We talk to our listeners. That's the, the listeners are our guests. Is that okay? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's great. Um, but in any case, I was at uh, Newsmax last night and um, ran into Rudy Giuliani, America's mayor, before he was demonized by the left. Remember this? Um, smashed the mafia, brought New York City back from being taxi driver and death wish land, uh, back to being made in Manhattan, you know? Back to the romantic comedies in New York after Rudy Giuliani cleaned the place up. And, and honestly, first he smashed the mafia. Still a little mafia, but, you know, not like, uh, not like the old days because he was the U.S. attorney there, Southern District of Manhattan. He took on the mafia. He's an Italian guy, so, you know, credentials. Rudolph Giuliani, that's, uh, that's Italian for Democrats listening along at home. And, uh, and he uh, saved New York City. He uh, smashed the mafia. And then, of course, September 11th, he was the mayor in New York. And he's a great American hero. And I ran into Rudy last night at Newsmax, and we, we had, uh, he was uh, generous enough to uh, spend some time hanging out, and uh, he's been watching the Newsmax show and had lots of nice things to say about it. I was standing in the hall when he came in, and he's walking by, uh, going from you know one room to another. And he slowed down, and he kind of, he kind of looked at me, he stopped, and he gave me a little punch in the middle of the chest and then kept walking. That was, that was his hi, how do you do? And uh, I, was, uh, I was actually on the phone at the time, on the cell phone, I should say. But I was standing in the hallway. I, I asked the, the nice makeup lady there, asked me to call her sister because it was her birthday yesterday, and she's a, a listener to the radio show, which means she's a very smart, well-informed person with an excellent sense of humor. And uh, so I was talking to talking to her when Rudy came up, gave me a little punch in the chest. And then uh, he sat down at a desk, and I went over and, and hung out with him for maybe 15 minutes. And we had a uh, nice talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, and, uh, and it was great. It was really, and I got to tell you, he's, he, um, you know, he's been so demonized and vilified by the corrupt news media. Uh, don't believe any of it. Sharp as a tack, clear-eyed, smart, got a handshake like a vice grip. Um, it was, uh, it was great. And I've, and I'd never met him before. I met a lot of people, but I never met, I'm going to add it to my gallery of political photos, my gallery of political, fo- I have in my iPhotos, you have this iPhotos thing and they have, uh, what do you call them? Folders. Are they folders? Is that what they are? And, uh, you have folders and I have my, uh, political, my political folder. And now, uh, Rudy Giuliani, uh, will be added to my, my political folders, which my, my political Photos go from Ronald Reagan to Al Sharpton, uh, just to give you some idea of the breadth and the depth of uh, <laughs> to Al Sharpton <laughs> and Marion Barry, because uh, you know Marion Barry was was on my list too. All right, but I uh, but I digress. Uh, yeah, also and uh, so the 9 p.m. show on Newsmax and this Sunday the uh, latest episode, episode six of the Biden Chronicles, also premiering on Newsmax, has not aired before. Um, and I know the nice people in uh, Chicago, Stephanie and, and WLS in Chicago, want me to remind that uh, June 8th in Chicago, I'm coming into Chicago for the WLS event and, you know, beers and dinner and uh, meet uh, nice people in Chicago. So go to the WLS website. You have to get tickets for it, but uh, go to the WLS website in uh, Chicago and uh, get your tickets for the June 8th event when I'll be coming into Chicago for all that. Now, uh, how about that? Michael Piercy and I were just talking because the nice lady that called in a couple of minutes ago from Ohio um, who uh, said that her cousin, right, was in the National Guard. It was Joanne calling from, uh, from Ohio and uh, talked about Kent State because her cousin was a National Guardsman at Kent State and they were under orders not to shoot. And, you know, you read about the Kent State thing and the, the news media I was just reading a thing from National Panhandler Radio and they said, oh, the peaceful protests at Kent State and the Guardsmen opened fire. Really, they called up the National Guard for peaceful protests, for the anti-war protests. Is that, is that what happened? And the famous photo of the girl crouched down and the, and the dead person laying on the ground, and the iconic photo, and NPR calls it, what is it, the Kent State Pieta. Nobody calls it that. But uh, NPR uh, wants to get people to call it that. The uh, Pieta, you know, uh, uh, Madonna and Child, right? The, the Pieta. Not, not exactly. Um, 
And we still we still talk about that all the time. But Ashley Babbitt was shot and killed while unarmed uh, at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, and the Democrats applaud that. That's, that's great. Kill more of them. Kill more of them. Like this uh, guy walking around exercising his Second Amendment rights in Maryland, and a, an Obama administration official says you'd be justified in just killing him on the spot for exercising his constitutional rights found in the Bill of Rights. But the Democrats are not on our side, are they? No, they're not. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get to yesterday because here is, a, uh, here is an amazing thing. The FBI hearing, uh, whistleblower hearing yesterday on Capitol Hill in the House of Representatives. And here's an important story. On Newsbusters, Newsbusters, Media Research Center, Brent Bozell, my great friends, not just because I got uh, the annual award for outstanding talk show host of 2023 from the Bulldog Award from the Media Research Center uh, a couple of weeks ago, never mind that, but uh, also because our friend Kevin Tober, our friend Kevin Tober, wrote the story, and Kevin Tober does our social media here at the Chris Plant Show, and uh, Kevin is great. Here's the Newsbuster story by Kevin Tober. Nets, the, the you know the networks ABC, uh, CBS, and NBC. Nets ignore hearing on FBI retaliation against whistleblowers. Isn't that amazing? On Thursday, the House Judiciary Committee held a hearing on the weaponization of the federal government against its citizens, a sad occurrence that has become more frequent as the government continues to grow out of control. During the hearing, numerous whistleblowers testified about being retaliated against by the FBI for coming forward to report either corruption or abuse of power by the government or its affiliated agencies. Being members of the Fourth Estate that were uh, uh, present Supposed to report on the government and its excesses, you would think the big three network news broadcasts would jump at the opportunity to report on this hearing and the shocking accounts that were revealed. Sadly, like most stories of any consequence these days, the big three networks ignored it because they rightly believe coverage would hurt the Biden administration. Uh, Let me uh, first of all say that is a great lead paragraph, isn't it? See, Kevin Tober is a young man. He's in his uh, 20s. How old is Kevin? He's in his 20s. And, uh, and that is a, you know, I, I point out bad writing in journalism all the time. This is not bad writing in journalism. This is good writing. That's a great, great lead paragraph right there. Instead, the three networks, ABC World News Tonight, CBS Evening News, and NBC Nightly News, decided to keep their viewers in the dark and wasted precious air time on stories like a fire at a North Carolina construction site or a security scare at the Vatican. Meanwhile, Fox News, Fox News' uh, 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 channel, the flag, flagship uh, newscast, special report kicked off the broadcast with the news that was made from the congressional hearing. And uh, it goes on also um, that uh, Newsmax, of course, covered it uh, thoroughly, and we did it on my show last night on uh, Newsmax uh, with discussion from smart people at the, uh, at the table there. And so on. But the key here is that the American news media, you see, is corrupt. And uh, I say this as someone who comes from a CBS News family. My stepfather was CBS News network news correspondent for 52 years. I grew up in a in a CBS News family. Walter Cronkite, Walter Cronkite came over to the house when I was a kid, and uh, you know, and I met him uh, many, many times, great many times. You know, uh, the news and and you know they were. Liberal. They hung out with Kennedys and stuff. But now, at the, they, they pretty much covered the news. And you could uh, argue about it, but back then it was okay to argue about it. Um, you know. And then I went to my Washington Post, which showed up at my front doorstep today. And I, I went to the front page and I'm like, well, where's the FBI story? It's not, it's not there. It's, I can't believe it. It's not there. I went to page two. No, and there's uh, uh, page two, Mitch McConnell uh, legacy faces new tests. They're attacking Mitch McConnell. Then the uh, DeSantis is poised to enter 2024 race, and it's an attack piece on Ron DeSantis. And and the uh, high court, they hate the Supreme Court because the Democrats want to pack it, uh, counters Warhol Foundation uh, uh, claim of fair use. And then a bogus nurse, fake diplomas, official search for unqualified health workers. We call doctors and nurses now workers. We call them workers because we're the Soviet Union. And then finally, you get to the bottom of page four, 
FBI agents who testified on alleged abuses had security clearances revoked. And the Washington Post is in favor of that. Letter cites violation of guidelines to claim whistleblower retaliation. And here they are. And the, the Washington Post is here to carry the water for the Democrat Party, which uh, spent all their time attacking the FBI agents, attacking the whistleblowers, because that is, as they see it, their job. Here is uh, one of the FBI <coughs> whistleblowers, Garrett O'Boyle, yesterday at the hearing. The FBI will crush you. This government will crush you and your family if you try to expose the truth about things that they are doing that are wrong. And your family. We are all examples of that. The truth. And uh, there they are. There are uh, four of them there. Um, uh, Garrett O'Boyle. I've since had to rely on charity because the FBI stopped paying me and um, there's no other way for me to make a living. I know from other uh, whistleblowers that the FBI routinely denies them the ability to get outside employment. Yeah, it was uh, can't uh, get the because you're being crushed. You have your top secret security clearance stripped, you know, but John Brennan still has his, and um, Mike Morell, the former CIA chieftain who signed on to that phony letter that was an in- information operation run against the American people designed to influence the outcome of the presidential election. They still have their security clearances, don't they? Now, why did these guys have their security? One of them had their, their top secret security clearance stripped uh, less than 48 hours before the hearing started because the FBI found out that he was going to be testifying, so they had to punish him. Uh, Garrett O'Boyle. On one hand, we want to try to get our jobs back because we are trying to do our patriotic duty. But on the other hand, we still have families to take care for. It's essentially a death sentence in the modern era. And um, <clears throat> if you're crooked on behalf of the Democrat Party, then you're good to go with your top secrets because that you know your next job depends on in Washington, the Beltway Bandit companies and all that stuff. Um, um, uh, Garrett O'Boyle. We're just trying to do the right thing for this nation, and if that means even becoming homeless at the hands of the FBI, then we're willing to do that. We're willing to sacrifice that. It's going to take a lot of brave men and women inside the FBI and outside the FBI to ensure that it gets back on course and working for the American people in the way it's supposed to. ABC, CBS, and NBC all decided that this story was not worth covering. Stephen Friend, another uh, military veteran deployed rep- repeatedly overseas. Uh, FBI served in the FBI. is trying to blow the whistle on corruption inside the government. And uh, we have uh, the, the goose-stepping lockstep network news outfits completely ignoring the story. Stephen Friend. We sort of laid the groundwork for people to feel that they could be protected as whistleblowers. Uh, those were the protection that we didn't receive, but now that uh, the Republicans in the House are on, on alert for that, then they could maybe feel that they, they have those protections and they can bring that information forward to this select committee and uh, we can get to the business of correcting the Bureau. <clears throat> correcting the Bureau. Um, well, you know, the Fourth Estate doesn't show up a lot of the time these days. And that's a big problem. That is a really, really big problem. Uh, Stephen Friend. You may think I'm a political partisan. You may think I'm a grifter. You may think I'm a conspiracy theorist. It does not matter. Simply put, this committee should avoid the temptation to impugn the character and the motivations of the messengers seated before you. But that's, of course, what the Democrat Party did throughout the entire hearing as they attacked the whistleblowers because... They know that, uh, you know, they, they hate police corruption. They, they'll lynch any cop who, like Michael Brown, hands up, don't shoot, never happened. Uh, and the police officer is still in hiding. I think he had to move to Murmansk or something to get away from the, the Democrats. Uh, but the FBI corrupt all over the place. The Democrat Party recognizes that it's okay. This is police corruption they can back because it's police corruption that serves the interests of the Democratic Party. The FBI suspended my security clearance accusing me of actually being disloyal to my country. This outrageous and insulting accusation is based on unsubstantiated accusations that I hold conspiratorial views regarding the events of January 6, 2021. Yeah, and they kept doing that yesterday, didn't they? Yes, they did. We have more from uh, whistleblower Marcus Allen, who was, uh, we were playing some of the audio for you yesterday. I'm there. Dim-witted Linda Sanchez, uh, Congresswoman from California, making stuff up. And I've got a funny story about that coming up as well. We're at 888-630-9625. All right, let's, uh, let's go to the telephones, Michael. 
and talk to the nice people. Let's go to Greg calling from Aberdeen in Washington State, listening on Tune In. Tune In. Hey, Greg, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, hey, how you doing? I, why does the ugly, vindictive, mean-spirited FBI treatment of whistleblower Garrett O'Boyle remind us of what the Trump haters allege that Trump does. They say that he's evil and mean spirit, and, and that may have been true 30 or 40 years ago, but not now. <laughs> but the the things that the FBI is doing to, to Garrett O'Boyle, that's just, it's like they're projecting their hatred of Trump. Well, they're good at hate. You know, one of the things they're really good at is hate. I've been talking about this uh, since I started doing talk radio many years ago. They have, the Democrat Party has the ability to, I call it, point and hate. They can point at someone in a crowd and like, and uh, like, uh, like Satan stands up out of a crowd, points at someone in a crowd, and, they, and, and all Democrats are required to hate whoever that is. And you're talking about the FBI uh, special agent, Garrett O'Boyle, who testified yesterday, a guy who served in the Army. He was 101st Airborne, screaming eagles. Uh, he went to Iraq. He went to Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, then he went to work for the FBI. And he's the villain of the story. He's the bad guy. You know, you know why, Greg? Because the Democrats say so. And they have secured information dominance. And I played the Malcolm X soundbite a little bit earlier today. Well, Malcolm X, back when he was living, said that the news media is the most powerful institution in the world. They can make the guilty innocent and the innocent guilty. And the Democrat Party realized that long ago, and they seized control of the news media. It's a, it is effectively, with the exception of, I'll say, Newsmax and this radio station and few others, and there are and there are others, you know, who are trying to get the truth out there and tell the truth. And and I told this story earlier today about uh, Jen Psaki at uh, Media Sun at MSDNC saying, "How dare you tell both sides of a story if they disagree with the other side of the story?" Right? And then I told you that. ABC, CBS, and NBC completely ignored the entire FBI whistleblower story last night in their 30-minute nightly broadcast. Um, what does that tell you, Greg? What does that tell you? It tells me that as children, they were slow, and they were catered to and spoiled, and everything that they did, they were given preferential treatment, and now they've come to expect it, and they're spoiled, and they're dumb, and they're, they're slow. Yeah, and I, I tell you, um, <clears throat> it, it, it speaks to something that I've been talking about for uh, some time also, and that is the concept, and it's a military concept that you learn in military training, of information dominance. Information dominance. Uh, there have been stories about how the Chinese communists are attempting to secure information dominance. They'll have to take it from the Democrats here. 